What's the scariest thing that's ever happened to you? Supernatural or not? Couple days ago I woke up to my home alarm going off. The thing literally hurts to walk near it. The scary part was, after I shut it off. I checked the doors and one was wide open. I also live alone. Alarm scared off your intruder. I know. That's why it was scary. This is why I tell my wife, if the alarm goes off in the middle of the night or day you should investigate first. When the first thing you do, is rush to shut it off an intruder, that was going to flee, could just stick around because hey. What a no. The alarm shut off. Let that son of a bee ring long and loud. Make the security company call you, and have them on the phone while you investigate. I got a letter in the mail, addressed to my college campus mailbox address with my full name and mailbox number written on it. It was a Christmas envelope with the address, written in purple marker, stamped from Nebraska, where I know no one, with no return address. Inside was a single coupon for a free Wendy's Frosty. Bless you. I'm so glad this is the scariest thing to happen to you. Supernatural or not. Heart attack while I was driving. Pulled over and went into cardiac arrest. How did you know what was happening slash to pull over? Visiting my aunt and uncle in an unfamiliar city, where they live in a farm just outside city limits. I'm a night owl, and decided to smoke a cigarette on their front porch, because I cold and sleep. They live in a rural agriculture area outside a city which is relatively well known for violence. And as I'm smoking, a random car starts pulling down their massive dirt driveway. I start having a mini heart attack, because it's 3.30am and someone was intentionally driving about a one quarter mile, to get up to the house. I start looking for rocks or anything to defend myself with with right as this car pulls up next to the front door. Right as I'm deciding to either bolt back inside, and lock the doors or attack guns blazing with a couple rocks I have picked up. The driver slowly rolls down his window. I hear a thud on the pavement by my feet. I shockingly drop all my rocks and my completely ashy cigarette as just stare blank faced at the daily newspaper as the goddamn paper boy slowly turns around, to finish the rest of his route. I was 13 and babysitting two 7 year old boys. One of the boys found his dad's gun. They proceeded to point it at me, and threatened to shoot me, because they found it funny. I still don't know how I talked them into putting the gun away. I had been babysitting them for a year on Wednesdays. That was the last night I did though. Fell asleep in the living room watching TV. Wake up around midnight to my dad walking past me. He heads to the side door, unlocks it and starts walking to the chicken coop. By the time he's outside I'm up, and following after him, calling out in a whisper dad. What are you doing? No response. I think maybe he can't hear me despite being only a few steps behind him. Dad walks into the chicken coop and I lose sight of him for about 2 seconds. I walk into chicken coop and... It's empty. I'm very confused now. There is only one door for the coop, and I'm standing in it. Suddenly, there's a hand on my shoulder. Almost jump out of my skin and whirl around. It's my dad. He heard me walking outside. Had followed after me trying to call out my name, but for some reason I hadn't heard him. Woke up around 3am one night to loud tapping outside my bedroom window. My bedroom was in the basement of our house. I assumed it was raccoons or something trying to get into our neighbor's shed. After listening for a while longer I managed to fall back asleep. In the morning I brought up the noise to my mom, who said she had heard a similar noise coming from that same side of the house. Only she got out of bed and went to the front living room window to investigate. What she saw was a man emerge from between our house and our neighbor's place. He stopped in front of our home, took a long look before removing a pair of latex gloves and then proceeded to walk down our street. I assume he was testing for weak spots or something and luckily didn't manage to make it inside that night. It's shit like this that makes me dread the idea of living in a house in the future. Ain't nobody tapping my window from the 23rd floor of my apartment. The security systems will be bonkers though. A Roomba with attached vapor rifle. My family narrowly missed an armed carjacking. When I was about 10 a guy waved my family's car, wagon full with my parents up front. Me and my two siblings in the back. And dog in the way back, down about two blocks away from where we lived. My dad being the nice guy he is pulls over, and the dude walks up to my mom's door. She rolls the window down, and the guy casually reaches in, and opens the door and grabs my mom to pull her out. 
She screams Geo or something of the sort and my dad floors it. We blast out of there, and my mom shuts the door. In the rear window the dude is jogging after us holding a pistol. We speed past our house and drive around for 5 minutes before my parents decided that we have to go home. There's nothing else we can do. Pulling back into our driveway was the most scared I've ever been in my life. This is all pre-cell phone, or at least before everyone had one, btw. Wife texted me to say she lost Artuyo. In Tokyo, we are Canadians. A stranger brought him back. She turned her head away a few seconds to pick up something our son had dropped, and he had run into an elevator. When I was 4 or 5, I did something similar to your 2 year old. My sister and I raced to the elevator of our hotel in Hong Kong, while our parents were just leaving the hotel room. The elevator opened, and I pressed a bunch of buttons and it suddenly closed on me. It then opened again, and I couldn't find my parents or my sister. The hotel floors all looked the same, which I didn't know at the time as it was the first time I remember being in a hotel, or in an elevator for that matter. I started crying in the hallway thinking I would never see my parents or sister again. These two housekeeping staff heard me and brought me into a room where they gave me cookies and milk to stop me from crying. They then proceeded to take me to the lobby thinking that my parents would be there. They were and, as soon as I saw them, I ran as fast as I could and gave them a hug. Guy tried to kidnap me off the side of the road, grabbed me and pulled me into his truck. I hit him with a bag of 1 liters bottles I had just gotten from the corner store and took off for the woods. Glad he decided to take off instead of chasing me. I'm glad you're alive to tell us your story. Did you notify police? I've told this story before. But it always sticks with me and gives me goose bumps when I think about it. I was driving home late one night when I saw a girl on the side of the road asking for help. I distinctly remember every nerve in my body suddenly going on edge. And I locked the doors as I drove past. Old car had manual locks. But something was telling me that no matter what, I shouldn't stop and help this girl. As I went by her I remember her yelling fuck you. I felt guilty for not doing anything about it. So next morning I looked up reports in the area to see if I could find information on her. Turns out a guy got carjacked in the exact same area trying to help a girl in distress. He pulled over and a group of people beat him and left him on the side of the road while they took his car. The girl in the report perfectly matched the description of the girl I saw. Cousin told me the same story. Girl in distress on the side of the road in a wooded area, so he pulled over, and she said she needed a ride, and at that moment he saw a group of guys coming out of the woods. Needless to say he noped the f out to there. This happened right outside of Spokane Wa. I went on a film and trek with my boy scout troop several years ago. It was a great trek. But one night I woke up to my tent mate violently shaking. It looked like he was having a seizure. I was freaking out. A few moments later he calmed down and woke up. He then asked why I looked so terrified. And I explained to him why. He gave me a weird look then said. Oh I was dreaming that I jumped into a cold lake. Probably the most panic inducing moment in my life judging by the fact that we were deep in the wilderness. But luckily nothing was wrong. I was camping in Alabama with my troop probably 8 to 9 years ago now. Woke up and saw a raccoon crawling over my tent mate's chest. I pissed myself. Blew a tire on I-75 in Gap. My wife and kids were in the car with me. The car spun around 180 degrees. And we were facing a Mack truck for a second before the car swung back around forward and skidded off the road to the left. Traffic stopped completely. And several guys helped push my car to the right shoulder. I don't know how that truck didn't destroy us. We should be dead. Was riding a motorcycle going 50 miles per hour and had a woman in a minivan pull out 40 feet in front of me. I put the motorcycle in the slot on the double yellow line with oncoming traffic. All I could think was fuck this is going to hurt and I somehow managed to hit nothing. Those fuck this is going to hurt moments where nothing happens are the best non-narcotic highs known to man. Was day tripping in Dublin with my parents and sister. We went to a busy restaurant called Bewley's. It was the 90s. My parents were up ordering food. And my sister and I found a seat slash table somewhere in the restaurant. It was bustling with people. I wanted a specific drink and forgot to tell my mom to get it for me. 
so I left the table and went up to the counter. Told my mom what drink I wanted. I was heading back toward the table my sister was at. But because it was so busy I forgot where it was. I couldn't see it. Sensing my confusion. A woman said that I had to come with her. That my parents said that I have to wait with her. She was sitting at the table with the man. Even though I was like 7. I could sense that something was not right with that statement. Sure I was only up at the counter with my mother. I said no thanks to the woman and in that moment seen the top of my sister's head. I sat down not thinking anything of what happened. It gets weirder. So mam and dad come forth with food. And next minute mid eating. The same woman and man who tried to convince me to stay with them. Walked over to our table. She said to my parents you have beautiful kids she put down two bars of chocolate on the table and said they were for us. With that she took off with the man out of the restaurant. My mother remarked to my dad well that was strange. And I said yeah. She asked me to come with her. And said that you wanted me to. My mother and father nearly fell off the seat. My father was raging. TL slash DR. Woman tried to manipulate me. So she could abduct me in a restaurant. A strange exchange of chocolate giving was had. My father raged. Confronted a guy that was trying to subtly force a girl that was too drunk to get into his car. Known the guy for years and wasn't surprised. The girl was a friend's sister out visiting and had never met this guy before that night and didn't speak to him at all until she was full on sloppy drunk. The guy got pissed at me and cornered me at the bar to threaten me to shut the f up. I told him that what he was doing was wrong. But the whole time my legs were like jelly and I thought I was going to throw up. I'm not a fighter and I've never even thrown a punch. Some of my friends saw what was happening and got me away from him. He ended up following me across the bar and grabbing my arm while yelling at me. I pulled my arm away and turned away. I heard a scuffle and turned back to see him being dragged out of the bar by three of my friends. Turns out he had raised his fist to hit me from behind, and they had my back. The girl went home that night with her sister, who was oblivious of the whole situation, until near the end. You're a good guy and you have good friends. I slept over my cousin's house. We were playing around in his room like 14 year olds. Talking about Halo, and playing with all the random stuff on his floor. All I remember from that day is opening my eyes. Lying down on his hardwood floor with my head bleeding. They said that I had a seizure, and slammed my head on the room's heater. You know, the giant, hard metal ones. I guess the scary part was that I wasn't aware it was happening as it happened. I'm lucky they were there that day. When I was around 8 or 9, I was out hiking in the mountains with my uncle and brother, who was riding his bike. He started getting bored, so he decided to ride back to camp. We were on our way back, about 5 minutes after he left. We came around a bend and were maybe 30 feet from two adult grizzly bears. We stopped dead in our tracks. Had a quick stare down. And then they took off into the trees. After standing there stunned for maybe 10 seconds. Two park rangers came out of the trees. Asked if we saw any bears. And then took off in the direction we pointed them in. After the brief exchange. My uncle remembered my brother in a head. And started panicking. He picked me up. I never was a big kid maybe 50 pounds at the time, and ran all the way back to camp, to find my brother sitting there. The look of panic on my uncle's face will haunt me till I die. Next I imagine the two rangers ran by and asked a group of bear-like nuns if they had also seen two bears come this way. Imagine being the level of badass of chasing bears for a living. Saw this huge one foot red spider on the wall under the deck. After years I was afraid of going down there. But now I think the culprit was a broken rake. Slash. Lol this one's my favorite. Hit a fence head first while skiing. Flipped over it. Got knocked unconscious. Ended up on a different trail. And pulled my hamstring. If I didn't have a helmet I would be dead right now. I'm pretty sure you would have been dead a while ago. Sleep paralysis. It only happened to me once. But that was enough. I was staying in an old hotel that was rumored to be haunted, of course. My mom and I had gotten there late, after driving for hours. Had a couple of glasses of wine before bed. Then I had creepy dreams. I woke up laying on my stomach and thinking, okay, those were just dreams. You are now awake in a comfy bed. 
as I was thinking about how comfortable the pillow was, and how I wish I had one at home. A wave of pure dread washed over me, and I was thinking oh no oh no oh no. Then at the foot of the twin sized bed, I felt two hands slam down on either side of my feet, one at a time, as though someone was leaning all of their weight on their arms. Then something the size of a 4 year old climbed up my body at freakish speed, and hissed loudly in my ear. My eyes were closed this whole time, but I squeezed them shut harder, and could see what looked like TV static. I tried to yell for my mom who was in the other bed in the room with me, but I could only get out muffled sounds. Then it ended. I know it was sleep paralysis, but it was so real that I understand now why people believe that it is real demon slash ghost slash etc. This is very similar to my experience with sleep paralysis. My young brain imagined the dark shape as a doll, as that has always been a big fear of mine, but it was crawling into the bed from the foot. When I was around 7, I had a dream about my mother. She was surrounded by people in white with a hole in her stomach. Throughout the dream she kept getting sicker and sicker. She eventually passed away in the dream. I woke up crying, and my mom asked me what happened. And I told her that she was going to die. She said she wouldn't it was okay. My mom passed away about 5 months later. She had stomach cancer, which I didn't know about until I was older. She had been sick for a long time. Another dream I had was about my little cousin getting hit by a car when she ran into the street outside of a community center we went to a lot. Two weeks after I had the dream she stepped out into the middle of traffic because she saw our grandpa across the street. I grabbed her before the car hit her. Yeah I dreamt that my dad died the night before he did. It was my life in flashes after his passing and everything that happened in my dream has happened. Sobbing on my knees in the gravel driveway of his house. My mom referring to him in present tense, stopping, and correcting herself to past tense. Wish you were here by Pink Floyd on the radio making me stop in my tracks. Everything happened exactly as I'd rent it. I was babysitting my little sister one night. We were recently moved, and this was the first night in the new house without her parents being there. It's my half-sister, so she was a bit scared to comfort her. I left on the light in the hallway and went in her parents room to watch TV so she could hear me being there. About an hour or so later, I needed to use the bathroom. The door was wide open and makes a lot of noise when you close it. I decided not to close it as to not wake up my sister, who was fast asleep. Also, turning on the light would activate the ventilation system, so I decided to make my way with the light from the hallway, which was enough. I peed. Washed my hands. Bent over to take a sip of water from the tap. Now, apparently, my sister did wake up, even though I really tried to be silent. She walked over to the bathroom and stood in the doorway. I only saw her when I got up again. And I saw her through the mirror. Now imagine, you bend over, take a sip of water, get up, and in the mirror, you see something that wasn't there before. And that something is a little girl. Nightgown teddy bear, long hair, and lid from behind. I'm pretty sure that took 10 years of my life. I'm surprised you didn't die right there of the shock. Woke up around 3.30 one night to get a drink of water. I left my room, and while I was walking down the hallway I looked to my right and in the guest bedroom I see a very dark silhouette that's darker than the room. I stop and it stands up from the chair it's sitting in and starts waking towards me. I went right back to my room and did not leave until the sun was up. I have other stories about my parents house too. I was woke up by knocking on my door one early morning and I say come in. But no one does. Instead I hear someone walking away and go downstairs into the basement. Now there was a room right below mine downstairs. And a few minutes after the knock I hear a conversation in that room. So I think it's my parents talking. About 20 minutes later my mom wakes up and tells me her and my dad were sleeping the whole time. Another time I wake up around 3 ish and I hear a knock on my door. I say come in, but it doesn't open. So I get up, and there's no one there, but a picture fell, so I assume that's what made the noise. So I set it up, and go back to bed, but a few minutes later I hear another couple knocks on my door. So I just yell leave me the f alone, and go back to bed lol. One night I was laying in bed with my dog and he just starts barking and growling. 
So I look where he's barking at and by my fan I see this dark shadow crouching by my fan and it just disappears after that. I know it all sounds crazy, but I'm not making any of this up.